Okay, what to say, guys? I butchered this spot. The spot is terrible. I blundered here. And I was trying to be too fancy. I was trying to be clever. And I was like, look at me. I'm donk betting on a river that's better for me. That's just the lowest hand in my range. And blah, blah, blah. But it's just a punt. If this hand was on Eastie's punt or no punt, this is getting a full-blown punt. Let's go back to the beginning. Our tale begins pre-flop, as most good stories about poker do. And we have ace-king under the gun with 3-bet here by the hijack, and we make the call. The flop is 6-4-5, and this is one of these boards where out of position can donk bet, right, if they really want to. But it's not as much of a mandatory donk bet situation as it would be if we were cutoff button or late position. Because in late position, cutoff is going to have more 7s, 8s, 6s, 5s, 4s, 7s, 6s, 6s, 5s, 4 5 etc. And it's going to connect with this board a bit harder. And there's going to be a few more just like naked big cards in the buttons range. But in early position, there's going to be a bit more over pair density for the hijack here. And under the gun is going to have less of the baby pairs and stuff. So just less of a, a spot where you really need to capitalize on that, that range asymmetry and start leading. You just don't, don't have to do that in early position here, as we can see from the solver. Solver's building a bit of donk bet, but I could just simplify this out in my strategy and not be too bothered. I don't think this is going to make or break our win rate. So we do decide to check. Villain is supposed to play. I've plugged in half pot here as the only sizing because I think it's what most people would do on 654. As you move up in stakes, you are going to see more people check back here because less people are reliant on some simplified kind of brain dead range bet strategy on this board. It's not really like a, a spot where I feel it's natural to range bet as in position. But some people do at lower stakes as you move up. That becomes less and less of a thing. And the Ten of Diamonds comes on the turn. And let's take a look at what actually happened here in the hand. First of all, spoiler alert, turn was the Ten of Diamonds. This is a spot where I really grossly underestimated how good this is for me. When it goes check check in a three bit pot, there's quite a heavy swing towards in position having two big cards. And therefore out of position just has the monopoly on a lot of pairs and pair plus draw and stuff like that. So when your range is drowning in combos like 7s and 8s and 9s and jacks and some weak 10x sometimes and some good 10x sometimes and stuff like this, but it's a lot of pairs and vulnerable value hands mainly and the in position player, the 3 betters range here is a lot of brute force big cards like ace king, ace queen, ace check suited, king queen, suited stuff like this, you're actually going to have a range advantage but it's going to be in the equity department that's quite thin value and quite hungry for protection. So when that's the case, you just really want to be leading small with a ton of your range. We didn't really put that together in game because I was mainly just focused on the fact that my hand was ace king. And I thought this hand might actually be what we'd call a polarization mistake to lead with because I was worried that ace king was a bit too mediocre. In fairness, ace king is one of the higher frequency checks, but that doesn't really mean anything. I underestimated that betting is actually okay here because it functions as a hybrid of protection and value. And there's just nothing really wrong with that, even with Ace-King High. It's hard to make polarization mistakes when you're betting for third pot here out of position. And you're always going to get called by some worse hands when you have a hand like Ace-King, right? If you bet third pot here, Ace-Queen is going to have to call you sometimes. You're going to get floated by like the King-Queen combos sometimes. There's some weaker Ace-X here that's calling you like Ace-8 suited, Ace-7 suited in the sim. So it's, it's actually okay to bet here. I did, I did check and fill and bet the turn. So I'm facing a turn bet here. And we decided to call. This is actually really close. And I kind of overestimated how good call would be here. Like my hand, it's getting really indifferent on this node. And solver's actually beginning to mix fold even to one third pot. So against half pot, it's very possible that this combo is just better to fold. I do think against humans though, that call is going to overperform a little bit. And the main reason for that is that if they have checked the flop with overcards, I think they'll do like a kind of bad job of checking again here i think they will be stabbing quite a bit on the 10 turn with their king jack king queen combos and stuff like that rather than waiting until river but then again they are meant to bet those sometimes on turn in theory so yeah i think we could probably actually decide to fold here another interesting option and i'm not sure about it with this hand because this hand looks kind of wrong for the job but you could also think about the idea of raising in a spot like this so if villain does go i've actually got third pot in my sim but we'll take a look anyway yeah the races are more coming from like nine eight eight seven suited stuff like that we have slow played some of our our value hands here in you know pocket tens and stuff so so raises the thing but just not really with ace king at all back to the hand we did decide to make this call in hindsight i think this is pretty dubious already the river came the eight of diamonds and the way my reasoning was just off now was that i took a really general maxim and this is something i have to be very careful with and i said we have more seven x and pocket eights and eight seven etc than the opponent in six seven 
therefore this is better for our range. And then I just said, I'm going to just like build a value bet, donk bet sizing around these hands. The problem with this is that if we're constructing anything like the way the solver's constructing, we're actually getting to the river with way more ace-king combos than anything else. And never underestimate the abundance of ace-king, guys, right? You hear fish in the card room say, oh, would you have mate? Yeah, you have ace-king. And they'll say that all the time. But they'll say that because ace-king is a hand they see a lot. And they've processed that, right? Because ace-king is a hand that just does appear in full ring poker in big pots a lot. Because it's 16 combinations preflop and ace-king offsuit is just, you know, very frequently going to be here in our range. It's the most likely hand to actually check call the turn. And so when we land on this river, we mostly just have a plethora of ace-king off. This is just what we have most of the time. If you imagine that we have sevens here, like, okay, we don't have that that often. Like, we don't always call a three-bet with it, and we lead it on the turn a hell of a lot. Eights is three combos. Again, we might fold that pre-flop, and we would lead it on the turn a lot. So realistically, we just don't have very many value hands. We're grossly over-bluffing. We're kind of spewing with a hand that if we check, we do just have showdown value. Villain's going to give up on this card with the case queen and stuff like this sometimes or whatever, or king queen at some frequency. So we're saying no thank you to a plus EV check and turning our hand into a completely spewy bluff for no real reason, being too vague and the whole time not processing that we actually just don't have a lot of value hands in this spot. While we do gain some very rare nut advantage here, it's such a small region of our range that anyone that's thinking can probably expect us to be over bluffing if we're ever turning Ace King into a bluff. We did get raised. I assumed at the time that was because I just ran into pocket 10s or pocket 7s or something. Who knows though? Maybe my hand is just kind of silly. I'm, I'm now getting more like self-conscious about the hand, of course, because I lost and this is a natural tilted reaction that humans have. But now I'm kind of wondering like just how absurdly I'm over bluffing this spot. Almost all of my range is now ace king for doing this, and I just went really wrong here. And I think it's important to to sort of accept that you can make really big mistakes sometimes during a hand when you go out on a limb and do something extremely non-standard. For example, on this river card of the eight of diamonds, after we've check called the the turn, there is no donking, right? No donking at all because when you look at range equities, we're still a big equity dog. We're a big EV dog. We're only entitled to seventeen chips out of 51 we should not be donk betting in a node like this we can actually see here in the sim that when we lead ace king offsuit big we throw away about seven big blinds seven chips sorry in a one two game three and a half big blinds that's a lot of big blinds right that's a that's a real punt so yeah i'm a bit embarrassed about this play but i wanted to bring it to you on hand of the week so i want to show you the dangers of what happens when you know you're streaming you've got six seconds on the clock there's all these excuses but realistically the thing I've done wrong here is I've acted impulsively on a really general maxim without taking my time to think through the spot. And some of the biggest mistakes I make in poker come from that pattern where I just simply don't take my time, don't double check my working, don't trace the action, the ranges, the configuration enough and do something really silly. So when I looked up this hand today, I was like, yeah, of course this is horrible. But at the time of the hand, it was enough for me just to say, oh, it's better for my range, so I'm going to build a donk bet, and this is the bottom of my range. Uh, yeah, I've not thought through range versus range here. I didn't have a good feel for what the ranges were, and when you don't have a good feel for what the ranges are, you should actually just retreat into the thing that can't be a mistake, like checking ace-king high for a decent amount of pot share. All right, guys, I'll see you next time on Hand of the Week. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you next time.